In this channel, we look at some pretty old coins. We forget for a moment about the present and our highly standardized, machine-made coins that look indistinguishable from one another, as we look into handmade pieces struck with hand-sculpted dice meant for a pre-industrial society where things were, well, made by hand. But today I have an interesting proposition. Let's look at the time when the old met new, when a millennia-old technique was replaced with new, revolutionary machinery. What I have here on screen now might not look very impressive. This is an 8 Maravedis coin from the Kingdom of Spain. Check out the date. 1605. This is among some of the very first machine-made coins and was considered the product of absolutely cutting-edge technology back then. It has all of the characteristics of a modern coin, despite its vintage look and, well, the fact that it is over 400 years old. How about we take a look at how it was made and what kinds of advantages did this coin have over its hammered predecessors? For this, we will have to go back a couple more centuries into the past. This is a coin from the late medieval period, around 1390-1400 AD, also from Spain, more specifically back then the Kingdom of Castile and Leon. This is a Blanca of King Henry III and is a coin you would find on every marketplace around the kingdom. As you can see by its color, it had a very low silver content, actually less than 10%, meaning a single one of these coins did not have an awful lot of purchasing power, so lots had to be struck to allow the economy of the kingdom to properly function. How was this coin made? What's curious is that, apart from some small details, the technology involved in the making of this coin was the exact same as the one used when striking the very first coin some 2000 years prior, that's insane. Imagine doing something today the exact same way the ancient Romans did. So, it all started with an ingot of a fixed weight, and these ingots were a mix of silver and copper, in a proportion established by the royal authority. They were heated up in a furnace until they were red hot, and hammered until they were very thin sheets. These sheets were then manually cut by a mint worker, resulting on a razor-thin coin blank. This blank was then placed between an obverse and a reverse die. These dies had the images meant to be placed on the coin, and it was struck with a sharp hammer blow. Once struck, the coin received an acid bath to enhance its surface appearance, giving it a more silvery look and improving its overall look. The end result was this lovely little thing here. Sadly though, as a coin, as money, as a tool of transferring value, medieval coins had a series of problems. First, since the initial metal sheet that would generate the coin flans was manually hammered flat, it resulted on flans of uneven thickness. This led to coins of different weights. The deviation wasn't too bad, a couple of tens of a gram more or less, but considering how very valuable silver or gold were during the medieval period. A tenth of a gram here and there did make a considerable difference. Coins excessively underweight or overweight had to be melted down and restruck, adding a lot of inefficiency to the minting process. Another issue these coins had was clipping. Being so thin, it was fairly easy to get little pieces off the, off the edges of this coin. Just a little bit, not enough for anyone really to notice. After some time, you might have saved enough precious metal bits to mint a new coin. The problem here is this was a very common practice, meaning coins in circulation were very often underweight due to widespread clipping. Of course, this activity was severely punished, and die engravers even tried adding little dots around the design, marking the edges of the coin and establishing rules that any coin that had been clipped beyond these markings were, was not legal tender anymore, but still, this was a major problem to public trust on coinage. Solutions to improve coinage started being developed in the early modern period. This time frame, between the 16th and 17th centuries, 
saw the widespread adoption of new machinery in manufacture all over Europe. One could say the century saw a proto-industrialization of the continent. A very famous example of this new use of machinery was the printing press, invented in the 15th century by Johannes Gutenberg. One of the technologies applied on this printing machine was the screw press, which transferred the inertia of a rotating force, such as a water wheel, for example, into linear motion. This principle was adapted into new coin minting machines, which allowed for new high-quality coins to be made. But look how curious, this coin I have here was not made with a screw press. It was made with another technology, created around the same time, called the rolling mill. Initially developed in the city of Hull, in the region of Tyrol, modern-day Austria, Philip II, the King of Spain, saw the potential of this new technology and imported it to his kingdom, opening a mint in the city of Segovia, where this revolutionary little coin was struck. Its manufacturing process had a series of steps, so let's check them out one by one. Just like with hammered coins, it all started with a metal ingot. Now, instead of manually hammering it until it became a sheet, the ingot was passed between a pair of metal rollers. These rollers ensured a sheet of consistent thickness was formed. Next, we have what I would call the biggest innovation in this process. Instead of the manual striking of each blank into a coin, two cylindrical dice, each with obverse and reverse images of the coin, were placed in close proximity to one another. The dice were connected with a series of gears to a water mill, making them spin at the same speed. Then, the flattened sheet of metal was placed between the rolling dice, engraving multiple coins in a single strip, as we can see in this example. The force generated by the water mill and the consistent rolling movement of the dice ensured remarkable consistency on how the final coins looked like. On hammer coins, it's very common to find double strikes, uneven strikes, making part of the design appear faint, for example, so all sorts of irregularities. This new technology, however, solved most of these issues, and most coins look very consistent. Finally, you had to remove the individual coins from this engraved sheet. This was achieved with a cutting machine. An operator would line up each coin, still in this sheet, to a piston with a sharp cutting tool. He would pull a lever, and this cutting tool would cut the coin out of the sheet. And there you had it, a brand new coin. All coins made with this process had the same consistent weight, the striking process meant they all visually looked the same, and the end result was very hard to fake with manual tools. For precious metal pieces, so for example the famous 8 real pieces, or pieces of 8, the coins would pass through an extra step. A pattern was applied to the rim of the coin. It would prevent the coin from being clipped, as any removal of material on the rim would be immediately visible. Of course, these first minting techniques had some flaws. The most common was the misalignment between the obverse and reverse dice. The end result would be that on one side you would have a perfect design, while on the reverse you would have part of the design out of the flan. In some more egregious cases, like this one I'm showing, the dies were so misaligned that you could even see the beading on the next coin showing up. The cutting process of the metal sheets was also not always flawless. Sometimes a cutting tool that needed some sharpening or an uncalibrated machine caused tears on the finished coin. Also, and this flaw can be seen on my coin, sometimes the dies were placed too close together. This would result on the eventual clogging of some parts of the design in the die. As you can see on the crown in this piece, it has this flaw which might have been excess material stuck on the rolling die. Apart from the higher quality of the end product, these new coins had a series of new markings that made them very similar to a modern coin. In this case, we have a mint mark, 
So this little aqueduct, which identified the city of Segovia as other mints had other mint marks, it also had a denomination number, something new at the time, the little eight in Roman numerals, and the year of minting in the Gregorian calendar. So there you have it. Now you know how we transition from manually made hammered coins to machine made milled coins. Do you have any early milled coins? Let us know in the comment section down below. I hope you enjoyed this little episode. Leave a like and consider subscribing if you did. Happy collecting and I'll see you soon.